Hello and welcome to a Costa Women Zoom, one that we haven't done for a very, very long time here on the, the mainstream here with me as the host. I, I know Ali has been doing uh, some of her challenges to, to do more public presenting. So uh, if you have a look on the website and on Facebook, you'll see some of the recent interviews that Ali has done, especially the ones for International Women's Day. But today this is like an, one of the official Costa Women Zooms and I've got the lovely Pamela Morgan here with me. It was going to tell us all about the work that she's been doing in a very far away place. Good morning, Pamela. Good morning. How are you doing, Fiona? I'm grand. So listen, you're down in Estepona, but we're going to be talking about something quite different. Tell me about the project that you have got involved with. Um, our NGO operates in the Gambia, uh, which is West Africa. It's only a small country, only uh, under 2 million people. Uh, we went there nine years ago and we found a really, really poor village. Mm -hmm. And we finished up, I suppose, starting with Little Thing and finished up now we've done uh, six villages and 6,000 people with clean water um, and just myself and my partner and um, we've been working at it now and, and uh, we were just back in uh, January mm -hmm. and it's going really well. It's uh, amazing. They, they, they just need a little bit of help and then they pick it up and, and run with it. So just going back there one second and just so people know, what does NGO stand for? Um, it's a non-government organisation. You know, and our charity is Ping, P-I-N-G, which is People in Need Gambia. Okay, so, so I'm guessing there's a lot of red tape to set something up like that. How did you go about that? No, we didn't. We went straight into the village and spoke directly to the chief in the village. Mm -hmm. And amazingly, they actually brought all of the villagers, including the women, which I insisted on, and they actually uh, cleared the floor. They put down squares on the floor with um, a clinic, with electricity, with um, water, uh, a garden, about eight different things. And every villager then had stones and they all voted. And by the time they finished, the pile for the water was huge. Right. The pile for the vegetable garden was quite big. The pile for electricity had nothing because if you've got nothing, what do you need electricity for? Right. Um, so they decided what they wanted. And of course I said, yeah, you know, vegetable garden, no problem. But my idea of a vegetable garden is something in your back garden. Theirs was nine acres fence. Right, okay. It's a little... was, uh, about 19,000 pounds, you know. So we, we did the, with each village, we put in the water, which is solar panels, tank, about 50,000 per village. Mm -hmm. And then we put in an economic activity, which is either the agricultural or beekeeping or brick making or something like that, that they can actually make money. Uh, for the first time, some of these women so never. It's not just before. giving them something; they're also yes. then generating an income for themselves. Yes, oh. and that pays into the bank account, which we see, and that pays the maintenance of the water system. Wow. So they have water for the rest That's of their lives. Cool. Don't forget, a lot of these women, they're standing up, and the only thing they own, right? And yet they still they can laugh, they can they can uh, you know, they can communicate, obviously, because it's an old English colony, so I can talk to them. And uh, now this time we're right with the technology that you're aware of. Uh, a lot of them have phones and there's more internet and they have uh, internet around the Gambia now. Uh, so we can actually communicate directly into each village. Whereas mm. before we were depending on one guy who was helping us on the ground there. Yeah. Now I can actually talk to the girls there themselves. And, you know, they can laugh and they can dance uh, like nobody's business. If you look at the website, you can see uh, on our Facebook page some of the dancing they do with, with sheer joy. Oh, wow. it, it's, it's a humbling thing because when they have nothing, absolutely nothing, you know, there's, there's not a chair or a table in the house. There's a pallet in the corner with a sheet and it's poverty I thought I just had never seen before. And it's great to be able to help them. And the cost of women is a terrific vehicle. I think with Ali and yourself have done fantastic. And it's bringing women together. And there's so many joining every week. And if we can get to those women and say, everybody just do a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. just help another woman somehow, you know, that's, that's a great start. And, mm -hmm. and that's what I get excited of helping other women. And uh, you, you say it's like perspective, isn't it? What they see yeah. is what and um, how we see it is different so well, it uh, makes you realize every day how fortunate we are to be living in the south of spain mm -hmm. to have all the facilities and, and health that we have mm -hmm. and i'm looking at these girls and they have nothing you know mm -hmm. so to be able to go out and turn a tap and have clean water 
it's just changed their lives. Yeah. They're having to go and collect the wood, build a fire, go to the river, bring the water, uh, boil it. Mm-hmm. That took about three hours of their day. Now they go out, turn on the tap, and they said, it's wonderful. We can work in the gardens. We can come in, have a wash, have water for the food. The food. Women do everything, yeah. absolutely everything. Has that had a knock-on effect with other aspects of the community? So with women being the, like the forefront of the community, I'm guessing it's going to leave them more time to do other things, like with the children. And has absolutely. that like, led to yeah. educational initiatives and other things? Or? Yes, it has, because when I asked them, when they sell uh, the produce in the vegetables, garden uh, some go to the water maintenance some they eat and then some they actually sell and I was asking them well what are you doing with the money and they were putting it into school lunches into paying for schooling paying mm-hmm. for they all have a little uniform they wear and that's what all are interested in you give women an opportunity and they'll build a society you know and that's that's what we're working on and uh, it's it's worked really well. I met a group of girls this time we were out. They're running an operation. It's called the Girls Agenda. Mm-hmm. And it's something I think Costa women should get involved with because what we want to do is build a, a, a centre for them uh, in one of the villages called Brickama. It has 82% poverty. Right. Uh, nothing. And what we want to do is build a centre uh, in the next six months to try and give them somewhere like a safe Place where mm-hmm. women can go get advice, get education, and maybe a little bit of residential if they're in difficulties. These girls are, are going through uh, female genital mutilation, they're going through forced marriage, early marriage, um, and these girls I've met all went to Gambia University. And they're very articulate, fantastic, passionate girls, a bit in their 30s, mm-hmm. and they're, they've already been at this for seven years. Mm-hmm. And they decided when they were lucky enough to get to university that they would actually go out and go around all the schools, talk to all nine, ten-year-old girls and try and show them that they do have rights. Yeah. Um, and they reckon they've got to about 10,000 already. Wow. And that's why I think this, these people are worth helping. That although So your ten, project is now helping another project, essentially? Is that- it's brand new. We've been purely on water up till now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's gone well. And I think just meeting these girls... Uh, I think there's a time whenever women have to really stand up and say, and it's happening all over the world at the minute. And this is something that I think the likes of Cost Women is growing. Women are getting strength from each other. I yeah, think it's it, taken us a long time, though. We've been our own worst enemy in many respects, haven't we? So, I mean, the hashtag last week, on the, well, on the 6th of February, it was the 100th anniversary of women getting the vote in the UK. Yes. And um, the hashtag was still marching. And I didn't realise until I was looking into it that, I mean, that had taken 90 years to achieve. Absolutely. And we are, you're quite right, we are our worst enemies because you, can, you have to remember that most of the time we spend, we have to raise the kids. We have to look after the parents, you know. We have to multitask all the time. And what I'm looking at is, Women who have come into Costa Women maybe have time having moved here of an older generation, not necessarily yourself, but um, and they might have time to be able to help to do something. And so how can the Costa Women ladies who do have some time and want yeah. to offer their support, how can they help you, Pam? Well, really what we're doing is, is uh, fundraising. What I'm doing is I'm doing the jewellery. I'm also um, doing picture framing. I have a workshop so You're here. making jewellery and doing workshops and the money you yeah. get from that goes to the charity. Yes, yes. And picture framing. So if anybody needs anything framed, uh, we can do that. You have a workshop here in the garden and I'm fully trained. Uh, and and my, you have a website that we can have a look at? It's all on uh, Ping. Ping Charity. Yeah. Pingcharity.com pingcharity.co.uk we're a fully registered charity in Northern Ireland I was just going to ask you that so you are essentially uh, an expat although I'm not so keen on that because I can hear in your accent that you're not from these parts so tell us a little bit about where you came from and how you ended up in Spain um, well, my mum and dad have been here for a long time. Maybe, uh, I think they came out in 1969. Wow. So I've been, I've been backwards and forwards here most of my life. Never thought I would finish up living here, but there you go. Um, and I finished, uh, had a business in Northern Ireland uh, selling parts of cars, believe it or not, and paint, and did that for 33 years, and then sold up and came out here. Um, so that's not a female orientated niche there, is it? So yeah. you've always been a, like um, 
a promoter of equality. <laughs> well, always in, in sales and, and promoting, yes. And I think as well, when you get to, uh, was retiring quite early, you need something to be at. You know, I needed something to be at. Mm -hmm. And you can play golf a couple of times a week, but you need to be uh, you know, motivated. You need to still be passionate and, and have your own self-respect of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I find that by building this charity in the Gambia and working at this, I've, I'm the beneficiary of it. I've had a great time doing it. I've developed the skills of the jewelry and the, um, picture framing. My partner does wood turning, so he's making bowls and pens, right. and we sell those too. Um, you know, so we, we're getting a lot out of it as well, cool. um, and yet we're actually making a difference. And uh, how often do you get to go over to the Gambia itself? Um, we were going twice a year, and then there was a bolai three years ago, and then last year, they had a new president. Uh, Gambia had been a dictatorship for 21 years, and they just had a new president in last year. So there's a little bit of civil unrest, so we didn't go, and we've just gone back again. So we would normally go once a year, mm -hmm. um, because you have to go. We have maybe seven, 10 days of intensive meetings, organizing everything. Every single penny that we take here goes straight into the bank account in the Gambia, and go straight to the village. So there's nobody in between and there's no admin costs at all. We pay everything ourselves. And uh, that way that the money goes directly to the guy who's physically digging the holes, physically putting the borehole down. Um, and that way we get really good value for money. Our, our last uh, village that we just did, we worked out and it was 26 euros per head for water for the rest of their lives. Wow. You know, that's good value. That's bank yeah. your money. Now, yeah, so. that is certainly. <laughs> and how did you find um, the the differences in the community now with the change of government? Um, does it look rosier for you and and your um, your project? What was a big difference was that uh, there was much more freedom of speech. People mm -hmm. were talking. People were discussing the political situation. Two years ago, that wouldn't have happened. If you mentioned the the, the president's name, everybody started talking and quiet voices but now there's much more talk the president is president barrow mm -hmm. i think he's doing his best it's it's a problem that they don't have enough money mm -hmm. you know and anyway they they only look at villages or towns that have two thousand people and then they will help them with water our villages have only got seven eight hundred people right. so they have no chance of getting any government support right. and that's we've gone in at that level and uh the water in and then what's happening is one the first village we did is called Bafaluther and it had 750 people in it when we started nine years ago and in the census 2013 census 1400 people and now we're nearly up to like 2000 because because of team water you see everybody moves in yeah, yeah. and then we, we will go back and say well we need more taps you know we need more stand pipes you know uh, so that's what we were doing this time we were actually extending the water because there are so many more people coming in and that was giving us better value but i think the next venture is with it's going to be with the girls to build this center mm -hmm. um, and i think that's something that a cost of women should get involved with that we could you know have the publicity have the push coming that cost of women help to help this group of women Mm -hmm. uh, actually see a future I think they are starting to get a little bit of technology a little bit of as I said with phones and so on and you have to understand that they're going through a change over two generations which probably took us 20 generations yeah you're talking about moving very very fast you know and not really they are all Muslim but they're not really um, the things that they're having to deal with nothing to do with Muslim it's a cultural thing mm. from way back before even Muslim was about yeah and because we're talking about to say they still have diaries they still are being cut you know it's just horrendous sitting talking to them it's hard to actually take it it's just so horrendous their lives and yet they're so up and so ready to try and help other people mm -hmm. uh, to say it's quite a humbling thing that they they're uh, you could, I could listen to them all day. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, obviously what they're going through is nothing to the challenges that we face as, as, as costume in, in most cases. Because um, I always like to ask the ladies about being here in Spain, um, what would you say to a lady following in your footsteps uh, about settling here and, and making Spain a part of your life? Yes, a big advantage here we find is the variety. Like we go to Malaga for, and support the football team. Mm -hmm. who aren't doing terribly well at the minute but <laughs> you know uh, maybe they'll, they'll improve there's a match uh, this afternoon 
uh, there's the uh, Cervantes Theatre with lots of things on there. Um, and if you look, there are a lot of things that are going on both locally. Mm -hmm. There's the um, U3A, which is, operates in Marbella, uh, which is the University of the Third Age. Yeah. And they're doing lots of, of uh, lectures. A lot more cultural and international yeah. cultural things. Yeah. And I think as well, um, I find that with the, doing the framing and framing for artists and photographers and people who are actually working here. Mm -hmm. And that's great because I think that keeps you young because you're dealing with people who are still in their growing and they're coming and saying what do you think I should do about this or that you know and that's good too that you're involved in because I've been involved with this all my life yeah. and I think I've got some reasonable advice that I can I can give yeah, um, and Brian also teaches up in the uh, school up in Cancelada uh, mm -hmm. English because it's really important to try and stay with young people I think that's what I would say to anybody coming here don't get into a situation where you know you're playing all the time with 60 70 year olds you know you've got to be with young people because that keeps you young you know yeah. that's just the way it is and it keeps you in tune and touch with what is happening in the world you know yeah. um and i think yeah spread your ideas spread your things as much as you can and costa women's perfect for that my goodness you know you're seeing events coming up go to them um, and then you're meeting more women and the, some of the women that you meet are just amazing you know and you're it always comes back and I'm saying I met this woman and she's done this and yeah. you know they've done great things in their lives and I think it's important when you come here this is not a resting place yes. this is this is just another part of the journey yeah you know so you've got to keep keep pushing um otherwise you get old before your time <laughs> well that's certainly a good piece of advice there we will catch that phrase there we'll pop it underneath the video and all your contact details so um listen we've been chatting for over 10 minutes now so um it's been an absolute pleasure to to speak with you and i'm sure there's lots that the cost of women um locally and beyond can do to help and uh, maybe some you can go and speak to some of the other cost of women groups or something like that and see how yes yeah, certainly we'll do that can help you um but thank you very much for giving up your time today to chat with me and um i look forward to hearing more about uh the story as it unfolds about your projects in gambia so thank you very much thanks fiona